So uh, I'm sure you're aware yesterday, uh, Joe Biden made a couple of comments about how back in the day he had a great civil relationship with a couple of different segregationists say, saying, uh, I was in a caucus with James O. Eastland. He never called me boy, he always called me son. At least there was some civility, we got things done. And so uh, some people didn't like that. They thought, man, maybe don't talk about the great relationship you had with some of the most violent racists. I mean, if you look at some of the things Eastland has said, it is insane. So what did you think about this? Civility, what a dumb word. Why would you want to be civil with someone who is supportive of segregationist policies, a segregationist champion, an open racist, unless you also were supportive of segregationist policies yourself, mm. like Joe Biden was. When he entered the Senate in the early 70s, he was more pro integration than he eventually became because the white working class in Delaware basically pressured him against it. And then he was a crusader against integration policies in the North. He thought it was applicable for the South, but that the North should be exempt from those things, which was code speak for Northern racist rhetoric back in the day. And so what bothers me when we're talking about this conversation in the press is like, Biden wasn't just complimentary of the segregationist senators. He was a promoter of segregationist policies himself. Mm -hmm. And that's where we should be starting this conversation. Uh, that the, the, the Democratic front runner right now, someone who's polling very well with black Americans, especially older black Americans, is someone who was supportive of segregation at the outset of his career uh, as a legislator. And so we have to have a reckoning, we have to have a conversation about why that is and why maybe name recognition, why uh, just kind of his tangential association with Obama is winning out over his very disastrous rhetoric at the current moment. My belief is that that will change. But his, again, you know, I tweeted this last night because I just couldn't stand it anymore. His record's like 10 times worse than Hillary Clinton's was. Everything under the sun that you can find about Joe Biden supporting things that, you know, have aged incredibly poorly, you can find. And so I think that this is going to be the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Biden's record. And when we're talking about his record in relation to race, this isn't even touching on the 1994 crime bill. Yeah, yeah, and we, we talked earlier this year about his comments on busing. Um, that's not gonna go away, that will come back. Um, and so you're talking there about the record, which is true. He's got a lot of uh, big issues in his record that he can't really avoid and refuses to apologize for. But also you have the campaigning, like we've been saying this guy doesn't campaign well. There's a reason he lost the last couple of times he ran for president. It's because it's one. It's bad enough the comments about busing you know, decades ago. But he, he has to double down, he has to tie himself to those same people again. And uh, so I talked about apologizing, um, that there was a negative response from pretty much all the other candidates to what he had said. Cory Booker specifically said that he should apologize. And Joe Biden decided to do something different, he said this, they know better. Apologize for what? Cory should apologize, he knows better. There's not a racist bone in my body, I've been involved in civil rights my whole career, period, period, period. So when asked by Cory Booker to apologize, he says that no, it's Cory Booker that has the problem. Yeah, I mean, wow. Um, so first of all, this is Cory Booker's greatest day of his life that he's finally being talked about in the presidential race. So congratulations, Cory. And uh, uh, secondly, uh, Joe Biden is his arrogance is, I think, been I underestimated it even going into this this campaign. It's Trumpian. He just goes on the offensive whenever he is attacked about his record or rightfully asked about it because it's seriously problematic. So that's really what bothers me about this. I mean, he only, he only apologized about his inappropriate behavior towards women too when he was essentially forced to. He his instinct and his first instinct and his 26th instinct is to double down. And only when he's pressured those 26 times yeah. does he get to the actually apologizing. And it reminds me of Trump, uh, it really does. And I will, at some point, I'll stop adding this caveat as we get farther in the primary. But I want to make sure that people understand it because we did a couple of videos that were critical of Joe Biden yesterday. And one of the comments was, if, if Biden becomes the candidate, John's gonna end up supporting him, he'll have to eat crow. 
No, you eat crow when you were wrong and then you had a change. I've been incredibly consistent. He's worse than a lot of the other primary candidates and far better than Donald Trump. That is a consistent position, the only rational position. And so while I am not supporting him in the primary, yes, obviously if he's the nominee, I would support him. So let's just get that on the record long in advance of the actual election. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.